new on Curiosity Stream. With my infrared drone, I can see what others can't. Drone pilot Doug Thrawn uses his bird's eye view for the ultimate good, saving animals from desperate situations around the globe. Join the rescue effort on a new season of Doug to the Rescue. And you captured a Confederate steamboat? We're taking the ship to freedom. An enslaved crew, a stolen vessel, and a Civil War dash to salvation on impossible escapes. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Fed Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks, <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. Wow! And away we go. Welcome to season 17, episode number 3,671. Along with Steve the Throw Hill, the Ted Smith, Ooh. and my car. Montgomery! And you are the Metro. On tap today, Ryan Castle joins us from his basement, studio, dungeon, bar, and once again, we will sit and spin. And today, we go Hollywood with 10 songs you didn't know were written about a celebrity. We will play Profile This. Plus headlines, a men's room shout of the day, fun listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. Clack, clack. Drink it to drink. All right, here we go. Florida man calls 911 to say El Chapo should be freed and Joe Biden should be put in jail. Yeah. We head to Australia where when four pythons take over the deck in your backyard, you are living in hell. <laughs> Georgia woman takes off clothes in Walmart before peeing on the floor. Florida woman goes to neighbor's house with a bucket of urine and knocks on the door. An Australian authority sees $14 million in cocaine. The good news, they missed $70 million worth. <laughs> so party on, Garth. <laughs> Couldn't get along, could you? <laughs> That's all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. All the bitches, good day to you and yours. I think most people would agree that it is much easier to get fired from a job than it is to actually get a job. And while there's a million reasons why you might get fired, we have a list of the 10 most common reasons, and it's all the things you'd expect. Uh, what, damage to company property, poor performance, theft, falsifying company records, etc. Then there are those situations that are unique to you. We had a guy call in yesterday, and he mentioned that a gal he worked with ended up losing her job when a crack pipe fell on the floor. They didn't fire her because she lit her. They fired her because she smokes crack. A man in Australia. I just wanted to be clear with that. Uh, fair. Fair. Yeah, 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 you know. A man in Australia. He moved over 1,800 miles with his wife and his child to start a new job. He was fired two hours into his first day for, quote, being too fat. That's the reason they gave. A woman in Michigan. She lost the grocery store job she'd worked at for 31 years after confronting a shoplifter. And then there's a Brazilian soccer player who was fired because, and I quote, he ripped heinous farts in the locker room. That is the reason they gave he's no longer on the team. Uh, like we said, sometimes getting fired is a situation uniquely your own. And that's what we want to talk about today. Look, if you've had a job, chances are you've been fired from a job. Or if you've had a job and not been fired, you've watched other people get fired. So today's question, real simple. Why were you or someone else fired? Be part of the big show called 206 421 Rock. You can like the men's room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. KISW. Hold the shows, away we go. Welcome to season 17, episode number 3671. Yeah. You sound large, positive about that. Charge yeah. program we have for you. I know for a fact. What? As far as 3,000. 
671 shows that we have done here at KISW. That does not count 100.7 above. Correct. We started over. We started counting again. So I know there's more shows that we have done. And I know within 3,671 times of doing math on a daily basis. <laughs> math. There's you no mean way plus in, one? That's math. <laughs> there's no way in hell I've nailed this. This is not an accurate number. I probably missed a number. You know, I miss a number. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's no yeah. way this is the real number. I know that's the real number, and you know how I know? Because there's a lot of weird listeners out there that really keep track of this S, all right? And there was a day that you were off by one, I don't know, it was like six, seven months ago. Not the text got flooded. Yeah, that was just that the was the, email. That, was the mean, app, that was the happy hour. This is like you go. You're going back. You're going back 16 years on this. Right. I, I'm not sure that I haven't met. It's plus one. I'm I saying, know that. I, I'm not confident in my skills to do that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It should be the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> yes, it should. Probably be. a good chance that you know that didn't happen. I feel like someone would have called us out. Mm-hmm. Anytime if we mess up on anything, somebody was mad the other day. We're playing bulls on parade, right? Yeah. Now, normally, if I'm sitting in here, you get some of that action. Maybe it annoys you. I don't care. I think it's funny. Anyway, I wasn't in the studio. I come in. The song has ended. I'm reading on the text. All these people mad that I did not add the cow over Bulls on Parade. Hmm. All right. So, hey, next time we play it, I'll be sure to play the cow sounds. That way it's complete. Well, when they come back around eventually, maybe you can uh, say, hey, look, man, it's very important. Let me up on stage. Yeah, I've got some sound effects I want to play. Just one song. (laughs) Just one song, guys. No, I actually have a live cow. (laughs) Yeah, I just need a microphone right here and a spot for the cow. (laughs) And you guys uh, have to provide the cow. we got a big show for you today. That's a guaranteed fact. A a future repeat, I am sure. Ryan Castle joining us once again from his basement studio dungeon bar. And we will sit and spin. And today, we go Hollywood with ten songs that maybe you didn't know were written about a celebrity. All right. And typically, it's, you know, we we know Taylor Swift writes a lot of songs about people that she's dated when things work or work don't work out or whatever. Pretty well guaranteed to get a song written about you. If you want a song written about you, just date Taylor mm-hmm. Swift. Guaranteed. <laughs> Best way to do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But uh, there's all kinds of different genres, uh, different situations as far as uh, personal confrontations, just people having beef with each other or getting into a stupid argument or whatever. But there are songs out there that are pretty popular. Maybe you did not know that they were written about a celebrity. So that's coming up with Ryan. We will uh, sit and spin. And today, as we always do, on uh, uh, Monday through Friday at 6, we head on over to the Odyssey app exclusively for the Men's Room Happy Hour. Today, a little bit of what you don't need to know with episode number uh, 162. If you don't have the Odyssey app, download it now. It's absolutely free. You can listen to our daily podcast. I believe we still put up, do we put up like a greatest hits, Mike, uh, yeah. of the week podcast? Which is Each what? and every week on uh, on Friday or whatever the last day of the week is. How long have you been doing yeah. that, Mike? I've been doing that for a little over a year and <laughs> what, a half now. What is that called? <laughs> uh, it's called The Best of the Men's Room. The Best of the Men's ah, Room. Clever Do name. people listen to that? A uh, handful downloads, yeah. yeah. A handful. There's like six really? or seven hundred. Maybe we should reevaluate. Oh, there is six or seven hundred. It's Ish. a shortened version of what? Our, our week in review kind Pretty of Pretty much. It's, it's the best moments of this week on the Men's Room is, is, what, right. I, is what I post. Truly right. annoyed. I feel like a lot of people that download the daily podcast that like, they still want to hear it in the in oh, the, yeah. the long form. Okay, does that, that make sense? Yeah, I know we do well on the on the downloads of the podcast of our actual show. I can't speak to this best stuff thing. Because to be honest with you, this is you news just found to out. Me. <laughs> yeah. We do the Mega Cast. Mega Cast is on there. The the podcast is on there. Correct. Our yeah. daily podcast is on there. Hundreds of music yeah. channels, and then with Hundreds. the Men's Room uh, Happy Hour channel. Basically, that only goes live Monday through Friday at 6 when we are off the air. Here you get more men's room as we head on over exclusively to the Odyssey app. Uh, keep in mind, that's an adults-only segment uh, as far as the topics are concerned in the language. So we please encourage you to listen, but also <laughs> encourage you not to have any of the children uh, in the room. Mm-hmm. Also today, as you heard with BJ and Migs this morning, huge announcement concerning Woo! Pain in the Grass. It's been a couple of years since we've done it. Uh, yes! This year is three big days, actually four shows all together. But uh, three days of pain in the grass officially at White River Amphitheater. Uh, that starts off Friday, September the 2nd, with Incubus, Sublime with Rome, The Struts. Also, our, our friends in the Grizzled Mighty. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's been a long time since yeah. I've seen those guys. Uh, they've been I've out seen to- them a couple times. They've been out touring the world, I believe. They've All right. A pretty good run there. But uh, those guys are uh, great guys. Uh, maybe you've had a lot of drinks with them. Saturday, September the 3rd, Alice in Chains, Breaking Benjamin, and Bush. Hey! Yes! Along with Aaron Jones, Walking Papers, and our buddies, Wyatt Only, and The Wreckage also playing that day. <laughs> Saturday's going to be a fantastic day, White River Amphitheater, that's a fact. Then Sunday, go a little bit old school. I like this a lot. Sammy Hagar in the Circle. What you don't know is Sammy Hagar, if you've never seen him, puts on one of the greatest live shows you've ever seen in your life. Nice. It's almost a shame that... Yeah, 
Sammy didn't get back in, in good graces with you know his buddies in Van Halen enough for they could have just gone out one more time and played that that era of Van Halen music. I think, yeah, do you think he even wanted to at that point? You, you know what? I saw that tour. I saw a couple of their tours. And being a purist and being a David Lee Roth fan, I did see them when they came to Key Arena. I saw a couple of their shows when they reunited. <laughs> Sammy, does, Sammy, <laughs> Sammy just he does a better job. <laughs> Yeah, no one does it better than that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Dave, Dave is Dave, but I mean, it just seemed more energetic with Sammy Hagar. Either way, you know, we'll be playing some Van Halen tunes and everything else. Right? <laughs> Sammy Hagar in the circle. George Thorogood in the Destroyers. That's yeah. a smiley, happy guy right there. So I am at the uh, Chesapeake Bay Blues Festival one year. He's a mean dude, man. Along with B.B. King. And some I was going to say, you always have such fun stories about him. George he always is the life of the party. He may have mellowed out. We hope he did. Yeah. He is, but he is truly bad to the bone. Like he is, and drinks alone, and you know, anything else around. I with know him. why he drinks alone. <laughs> <laughs> I know why. That is one thing I've never questioned. He didn't point out he invited he people over. He doesn't prefer to be by himself. Right. That's not how this goes. He well, just, if there's an interview opportunity. You should do it alone with him. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've seen that movie. That's on you. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna say, man, I'm going to say it's George Thorogood in the Destroyers. Like, did everyone from Delaware quit? I'm going to drink with him. I'm determined to. Really? Well, he prefers to be by himself. Well, guess what? I annoy a lot of people. He will be no different, but his choice his of booze. His Johnny Walker and his buddy Jimmy Bean, this is they what drink saying. alone. This is what I'm saying. I like his choice of liquor. Like, hey, man, we're yeah. speaking the same language. I'll tell you what we'll do. Mm -hmm. You can drink alone. I just want to drink the stuff you have. Yeah. Right? So let me. Do, <laughs> right? Is that uh, fair? Give me a bottle yeah. of that. I will sit over there. You do your thing. It's fine. Uh, Pain in the Grass alumni, Queens Reich, uh, playing hey, once yeah. again. And a glorious son, so I believe I've seen a couple times. I saw him in Vegas do an acoustic show. I've I haven't seen him, seen him but I know uh, you're a big fan. I was going to say, I know Mig's a big fan, too. They are a great band. Now, here's what you need to know. The tickets will go on sale Friday morning at 10 a.m. through Ticketmaster. Oh, I forgot a show. Oh. Shoot. Uh, more theater. Uh, basically, we're going to have an unofficial, official kickoff party yeah. Wednesday night, August 31st. That will feature the Pretty Reckless and Aaron Jones. Mm -hmm. Yes! That's going to be a great show. So all those tickets will be available uh, available uh, Friday morning at 10 a.m. through Ticketmaster. And there'll be uh, passes to the men's room happy hour and a half. Party! Yes! Which we will be doing every single day of yeah! Hanging the Grass at White River Amphitheater. <laughs> Can we just do it for four and a half hours on one that, day? That equates to a lot <laughs> of right. drinking. Like, look, why don't we take one day, we go four and a half hours where we just get S house. And then as a result of the hangover, we don't do it the other two days. <laughs> It's the same amount of time. We're gonna have it's to just a bigger we're gonna have party. You can rally on this one. I think. <laughs> the happy hour and a half just turns into more of just sit and drink some coffee. And yeah, I need, a, conversation. <laughs> I need a sausage or a piece of pizza. I'm feeling <laughs> awful. Gatorade and Taco Bell. My God. <laughs> I can pace myself for one day. If I'm in Vegas, I can pace myself for about two before I fall apart on day three. I'm going to have to put the Vegas plan in action <laughs> on this one, man. Yes! That's serious, man. Because if I get there, I'm going to get a beer. I'm not going to be like, yeah, 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 it's uh, 1030, man. I'll wait till 1. That's not how I roll. <laughs> I, I just start pacing myself, and I, I drink water, but I still try to just keep it on the level. Keep I drink it on the level. water, but then, it doesn't really help, man. Then I and get look, there later on, I'm like, oh, man, I'm screwed up. If we're doing three days, i got to bring three bottles, right, of whatever. Because on average, it'll be a bottle a mm -hmm. day because we crush that stuff. And it's, once we open a bottle, that bottle does not stand a chance. We know this. Yep. So I'm to bring at least three bottles, probably some drugs. You also need to bring, like, six packs of generic bad cigarettes. Yeah, for all the people that are so going to bum them from me. Yeah. Right? Oh. You keep your Marlboro Reds, right? But you give them... What like I a... normally do is, seriously, I buy... An, and, and anytime we do pain or any kind of event you like this... You should buy, like, Virginia Slims or something. <laughs> you know Just what? Just buy... I, like, buy I, really Capri. bad... Capri. Yeah, some terrible menthol like, that you never would buy. Like, Newport's a good menthol. How about this? Salem Lights. If you want Coles. a Marlboro Red for me, they have to do something for me. But I do have a cigarette. It's a Capri. <laughs> yeah, and you're going you're gonna to be the guy walking around smoking a Capri. Because we know the people who bump cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but typically, we, typically we work with them. So like Kevin's over there in the corner smoking a Capri. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted a cigarette? Here you go. And it's an ultralight. If you want a marble red, you got to put your sucks. hand on my pants. That sucks. For 30 seconds. I tell everybody, <laughs> when they come to visit Seattle, they're a cigarette smoker. I'm like, don't give one out when you're walking down the street. Don't. It won't, uh, it won't dude, end. Dude, it's I'm, like giving a french mm -hmm. fry to a seagull and thinking no other seagulls are going to yeah. come swarming down. I'm on day 16. I've smoked since I've been 20 years old. I've still got the shakes. I can't. It, I'm still like, oh, God. I started, in the middle of the night, I just sweat last night like because I had a dream that I smoked a cigarette. You'll be all right, man. You're going to get a Capri. At a, yeah, I know. I smoke a, a Capri Ultralight. But I really don't. I'm like, did I really do it? Did I really smoke? I was like, whew. 
And then I was like, I really want a cigarette. Now. <laughs> now, it's, now it's in my head. Damn it. Can't go back to sleep. Okay, so here's what you need to do with Pain in the Grass. Pain! Yes! I'll go to KSW.com, look at the lineup, figure out what day you want to go, uh, figure out if you can go a couple days, three days, whatever it is. Keep in mind, we get Monday off. That's a that's a holiday, yeah. so you can you can you can rally from this yeah. if you want to go a couple days. You'll you, you'll be uh, okay on that team. What? Sorry, what? somebody just texted in. George Thorogood doesn't drink anymore. Sorry, throw. I was just oh, looking no. that up because I know it's been a big part of his culture. But I was like, I wonder if he actually still drinks alcohol. Cancel, cancel mm. him. Like you can't play if you're not going to be here. That's, being why people, that's, why, that's why the people from Delaware dropped. Yeah, Billy, you just need to destroy yourself. Man, you never been to Dewey, man. You know how we throw down. I'm, we're out. Dewey, Dewey Beach is a drinking town. Yes, it is. That, that is all. That's why the Delaware Destroyers are gone. Now it's just the Destroyers. So go to KISW.com. Check out the lineup. See what you like. If you want to do uh, two, three days, please do that. Keep in mind there's a kickoff party. More importantly, if you are not a Rockaholic Club member, you need to sign up for that thing right now. It's easy to do. We don't bother you a hell of a lot. We really don't. Because I'm a Rockaholic member. I get the emails, too. So it's not like it's like every day. There's a couple of companies out there. I'm like... I need you. I want you. Please stop emailing email every single freaking day. Yeah. Uh, we don't do that. Just when it's important, all right? But we do have a pre-sale for you. So, <laughs> Looking at you, rec shops. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike our company, yeah. Odyssey, <laughs> that sends me countless emails on a daily yeah. basis about things I don't care about, we don't do that here at KISW. <laughs> like they fill in my work email box. Yes. But we will send you a, uh, a code. And you'll be able to get some pre-sale tickets before everybody else. Uh, so sign up for the Rockaholic Club. Do that now. And then you'll be able to buy the tickets early. Uh, also, there are some $9.99 tickets, I believe, available for all three shows if you want to sit in the grass. I want to say the pre-party is a cheap ticket as well. I think that's a $9.99 ticket. But if you sign up for the Rockaholic Club, you'll be guaranteed in there. And how much do I need to spend every month to be a Rockaholic Club member there, Miles? I think they keep upping it every year. I think it's do like they? 15 bucks now. It's like Disney+. Plus. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's absolutely free. Yeah, it is absolutely free it'll save you some money and think you could go to all three days basically for 30 bucks plus ticket charges and taxes uh somebody here looking out for our health backstage understanding we already plan i get messed up says hey don't forget to eat well look let me be honest with you it's not that i forget to eat but my drugs of choice prevent me from being hungry (laughs) like i want to eat Mm -hmm. there's good food around i'm just like i am so high on certain things that uh I'm doing, hallu- I don't, I'm doing hallucinogenic. That's what I'm I mean. Just gonna be honest. It's not that I forget to eat, but on these particular yeah. drugs, you're just not hungry, man. When we're done, man, I'm gonna just sit in the grass, man, and be like, yeah, yeah I'm gonna feel terrible. Tomorrow. If you see us, we're gonna be tripping balls. I have to tell you that right now. I know I am. Yeah, I mean, but we always do. But it's fine. And even I'm the bosses, I'm harmless. Our bosses, they even say, look, just don't get too yeah. messed up. Because our old boss is like, you're gonna be drunk, you're gonna be stoned. I don't know what you're stoned on, but. Just keep it together. I'm like, you got it, man. No, they tell me, don't let mm-hmm. them get too messed up. They, they've given up telling you guys a long time ago. They now put it on me <laughs> to not let you guys get too messed up out there. I don't exactly. think we're going to listen. Man, you, you trust me. You'll know I'm on acid. I if know. You're, if you're, if you're <laughs> like, if we, any interview we do, I'll just, I'll be looking at Gavin Rosdale's face going like, what is your skincare routine? <laughs> This is your your face is perfect. Who is the guy that sings for? Uh, do, do you use an exfoliating? What, what is it? Who's the short dude? Say Godsmack. So Sully Erna. Yeah, I was tripping on shrooms uh, at Pain in the Grass, and I just remember I'd tell myself, "Don't open your mouth," because he's shirtless and angry, but it looked like his nipples were melting, mm-hmm. and I wanted to tell him so bad. But I'm like, maybe don't do that because they're recording the, uh, the the audio for this interview. So I just let Miles do the talking. But I'm just like, I swear to God, his nipples are melting. <laughs> oh man, this is weird. Don't say anything out loud, dude. Everyone's gonna you know are, you're you tripping. Are, you were warned that those were really strong, though. And Castle said, "Don't eat all of them." I said, "Yeah, okay." As soon as you turned around, a handful, <laughs> it's gone, all of it at once. KISW.com. The most important thing you can do is sign up to be a Rockaholic Club yeah. member right now. <laughs> sign up now at KISW.com. All right, a question. Why were you or someone else fired? 206-421-ROCK. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Check out uh, BroBible, uh, BroBible.com. Great website. Uh, this morning, article from uh, Cass Anderson came out. And he says, in terms of uh, memorable ways to get fired, I'm having trouble thinking of another professional athlete who has ever been fired for anything like this. It has been revealed that Brazilian soccer star Marcelo was fired from the Olympique Lioness, commonly known as Lion or OL, that squad for ripping heinous farts in the locker room and laughing about it. Prior to being uh, demoted to the second team, 
Marcelo had appeared in 11 games for Lyon in League One, scored three goals in his limited appearances. Leon? Is that how you say it? Leon? L-Y-O-N? Yes, Leon. Thank you. I say, I say Lion. <laughs> I know. Because it looks like Lion to me. How would you say Lion? Leon. Leon. L-Y-O-N. This yeah. is why I should not I go to Literally, I corrected Mike one time on the pronunciation pronunciation of that town. And he goes, how do you know that? And I go, soccer. Okay. And my All buddy's right. wife is French. She's from Lyon. <laughs> All right. There you go. In the wake of this explosive fart scandal, it's being reported that Leon, sporting director, oh, Christ, we'll just call him Perma Buccano, uh, <laughs> didn't like Marcelo and used Fartgate as an opportunity to oust him from the team. The gist of this uh, juicy fart scandal is this. He was ripping stanky toots in the locker room and giggling about it with teammates. Well, yeah, it's funny. And the team's leadership used that as an opportunity to approach him and remind him that his performances in games had been as trashy as his rectal emissions. Now the entire soccer world is laughing about Marcelo getting fired for farting with thousands of tweets about it by this morning. He's currently on contract with another, is it, Ligue 1 team? How did you spell it? Ligue 1. Ligue 1 team? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I fear this Lyon is Ligue 1. Oh, That's that just would what be... they call, right? Oh, like God. in England, you have the Premier League, we have the MLS. They just call theirs Ligue 1. Ligue okay. Because there's a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. That team is Bordeaux. Uh, but they have yet to feature him in a game. Either way. Uh, best take yet from Twitter. What's this man supposed to tell his family? His entire legacy as a professional soccer player will now forever be tied to getting fired for farting in the locker room. <laughs> Our question, why were you or someone else fired? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Hello, Danny. Danny. Hola. 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 <laughs> okay, so I have a fired story, but I wanted to ask a question. Um, Yeah. Really quick. If you're the biggest dummy... And you call in and you do better. Are you still considered the biggest dummy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I was just checking. Do you hear the echo? Echo. Echo. Is there an echo? Echo. Yeah. It's just coming back. Yeah. Sounds like we're 12. Sounds like we're 12. 12. 12. 12, I say. 12, I say. Is it still there? Somebody help me out. Help me out. I just entered a cartoon. Can you hear me now? No. 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 No, we're still getting an echo. Will you call back? Will you call back? Please? I'll call back. Okay, okay. Call back. Yeah, call Hi, back. Danny. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, how kind of phone is that? I don't know, man. I mean, you get echo, but it doesn't, like, recreate your voice to make it sound like, hey, this is you when you were 12. Hi, I'm a, I'm a child in last time. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Want some candy, kid? Good God. All right, take two. <laughs> Why were you or someone else fired? 206-421-ROCK. <laughs> Hello, Cody. <laughs> Welcome to the Metro. Oh, man, I don't know if I can follow that last call. Hold on. It's going to be tough. Did you hear the echo when we were talking to her? Oh, yeah, it was bad. So she's the only person that didn't hear the echo is the goddamn person we're talking to. Yeah. All, right. Yeah. all right. Am I arguing? No. You're all right. No, you're fine. All right, perfect. Hola. 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 <laughs> so why did yeah, you or somebody? I got fired for going through uh, company documents. What do you mean going through company? Why were you going through company documents? All right, so I, I initially did it because I have a bro that was working with me. We had the same position. And we were hanging one day, and he happened to catch one of my pay stubs on the counter, and I was making more than him, and so we went to investigate why. And then... Had he been I working there longer than you? Correct. All right. Well, you just got hired at a higher rate than he did, because it was probably later on. Yeah, and it also didn't help. Uh, he was a person of color, so he was... Getting really hot about that too. I'm yeah, sorry. look, look, yeah. I, look. Look. it was some jobs, <laughs> some some places too. Like you're doing the same exact job. Like there shouldn't mm -hmm. be a difference in right. pay, exactly, without right. question. So you would you wouldn't look through the documentation. How do they know you went through it? So um, I had access to the documentation because I was also part of payroll and everything, and so I was trying to help a buddy out, and I submitted a formal payroll increase request signed and everything you know forged but signed and it, <laughs> i got busted because he had just gotten an increase so the payroll manager was like we don't we don't give increases this quickly so that's how i got busted okay i like how you said it was signed but it was forged now when did, now, <laughs> now, when you did you when you got fired did you get a better job or did you have to take a step back so to speak um, I took a small step back, but uh, I like where I'm at now. Right okay. now, do you, 
when they ask what happened at the end of your previous employment, what do you tell them? Because I doubt you're going to tell them, oh, I was digging through payroll. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good luck. I, I just thought my violated company policy. All right, well, that's, that's true. That's yeah, fair, because yeah. different mm-hmm. companies, like, to me, that's the one, the way of the list, like, the top ten reasons people get fired. Right. And it's all the regular mundane stuff, but the tenth one on the list, leading company policy. And I'm like, right, that's the absolute gray area. Right, everything, mm-hmm. like, destroy company property. Understood. Uh, show up drunk. Understood. But I'm like, eh, violating company policy. It seems like most of the time you didn't realize you were violating company policy until after you violated it. Like, it wasn't intentional, and then they call you in and tell you, like, dude, I, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Miles and I played this for a while when we worked at CBS in Baltimore. They just, every year, CBS corporate, and they would send it out to all the radio stations across the country, but you had to sign the employee handbook or whatever it was. And in addition to just the regular stuff, show up on time, blah, blah, blah. They had all these things you could and could not do. So, But they were real adamant that you signed this thing within a week after getting it. Like, it was a condition of employment, and it just every year you went through this. So, when we tried to get a monkey to trash one of our boss's offices, right, they called us into the office. Obviously, they were upset about this. We ended up not getting the monkey, but we openly mm-hmm. advocated for getting the monkey. We were looking for a monkey. Because our boss was annoying the piss out of us. He's a germaphobe. We just wanted a monkey. To, we just wanted to open the door, and all of a sudden, he looks in there, and there's a monkey. And there's a monkey. Going through all stuff. Right. So, anyway, we get called, and we get in trouble. Keep in mind, the handbook had just come out like two weeks ago, and we're like, I wasn't in the employee handbook. Right, but what they would do yeah. the next year? Said nothing about a monkey. Right, but the next no year monkeys. they would head to the handbook stuff like no live animals can be requested, yeah. like to attack another uh, person or something mm-hmm. like that. So but you got to remember too, we, like we we put in our two weeks to be respectful. Yeah, they kicked us out of the building. Right. I mean, we even even if you tried to play by the rule book. Right. They, still was, would, they still would figure out a way to just be like, no, no, we're bullies. We're, we know, we're tough guys. And we're like, oh, come on. We can work this out. We can work our last two weeks and, you know, we'll be professional on the air and all this stuff. Like, get out now. Get out now. So we're like, okay, we're out. So we left. We did. We did leave. And then what they were going to do was run best ofs of us until they found a replacement. Well, lo and behold, I get a phone call at home from our now former they, boss. They had disappeared. And he said, hey. We yep, can't yep. find your best of CDs. Uh-huh. I said, well, ain't that about a bitch, man? <laughs> you kicked us out of the building. We don't I don't know what to tell you. We so don't know he, where they are. He said, I know you guys came here and got them. And that, no, we didn't. It's not. It's a, no, we did not take them. And no. that was the truth. What happened was our friend took them, medicine and Hallie, and gave them to us. <laughs> but he's like, do you have those goddamn CDs at home? I said, Bob, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. If you can't find them, you know, you got to tell us. I don't work there. I can't help you. We were I, willing to work the two weeks. You right. didn't need them. And you're and goddamn you, right we kept all the best of them. Puffed out your chest yeah. and acted like, you know, I'm a tough guy. Well, his thing was, he goes, okay. if I can't get them back, what do I do? So, it's your station. I don't work there. You know, and I'm not your consultant. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> my, my bad. Yeah. Wait a minute. He asked you what he needs to do? He, well, it what? wasn't so much that. It was more... What am I supposed to do? It's that kind of thing. I said, Bob, I, I don't know, man. You run the station. I'm not an employee. I'm not paid as a consultant. It, it would not be good of me to offer advice uh, for what you should do to try to track down. Give the, the overnight guy a crack. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let him run the show for a few what? weeks. He's probably going to. Still got the CDs in my garage. Probably just, do just fine. <laughs> Why were you or someone else fired? 206 421 Rock. Ah, the good old days. Good old days. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Danny. Danny, what kind of, phone, what kind do of phone do you have? Hi, I don't know what happened. <laughs> no, it's still, still happening. happening. Still? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Is this a burner is this phone? A burner phone? No. Uh, what the not, phone is it? What phone is this? It? <laughs> it's a Samsung S22. Well, it's, it's a crap. crap. It's a piece of crap is what it is. <laughs> You're talking on a turd. Can try to call this back on a different Phone. Go to a payphone. Pay Are, pay Are you on a Bluetooth? My landline. Are you on a Bluetooth? No. Huh. Sometimes it just Sometimes happens. It just happens. It happens in my place, too. Like, I'll be talking to somebody, and I can hear the echo. They can't. Echo. Echo. My story isn't even that good. He even called that. We know. So just call another day. Just call another day. No, I want you to keep calling back today. Echo. Just without this damn echo. Echo. Okay. Echo. Arena. 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 Pick the grass. Fast, 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 fast. What the hell kind of phone does she have? At know. least you guys didn't sound like you were 12 again. It got better, <laughs> but it's still there. You tell me that's a landline phone? No. Oh, it's not. No, that's a cell phone. She was going to call oh. us back on a landline. Okay. okay. All right. Just find a landline phone. Call us back on that cell phone, though, because it's getting better. Mm-hmm. At some point, it will get better.
That's what I think every time I watch Seinfeld. I'm like, look at that phone he's got. <laughs> I had one yeah. of those. Why were you or someone else fired? 206-421-ROCK. <laughs> Hello, Kyle. Welcome to the men's room. Boo, bitches. Boo. Boo. Yeah, so my story real quick. I used to work in a warehouse at night, and we had these big cardboard boxes for the refrigerators. And we bored one night and turned it upside down and cut a hole for a door and used to just hang out in there and <laughs> sometimes roll some weed for the ride home. So you'd be in and the warehouse. Got, Wait a minute. You're, you're physically in the warehouse, but you just went inside of a box of roll joints. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> like you. All right. All right. It was in the corner of the warehouse, and it was on a pallet still, so it just looked like another fridge sitting there. Mm. And so one night I was in there. I wasn't rolling anything, but what were you some doing? Noise, moving, around, just hanging out, watching stuff on my phone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, and so one night I was making some noise, and someone heard something, and they're like, Hey, I think there's like an animal, like a squirrel or something, or a rat or something in this box. Squirrel. And they're like, yeah, go grab the broom. I'm going to open the door and you hit it. And so right, I waited a second, and then I just popped out like, no, don't hit me. <laughs> and I, and do you got fired for that? Yeah, so uh, they called me the next morning and told me just don't come back. <laughs> 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 but, then they, but then they wanted me to come bring down my, my access badge to the warehouse. And I'm like, well, if you're firing me, it don't do no good. So, no. <laughs> yeah, just turn the thing off. Yeah, turn it off, yeah, dummy. They, they you... said they mail me my check. So I was like, well, why do I have to come down there and turn that in? It's, I'll just throw it away anyways. Mm -hmm. Do you get a better job after that? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Are you working with job. boxes anymore? Uh, crazy enough, yes, but uh, I don't do that no more. You're like a, you're like a human cat. Yeah, yeah it's like you just like I had a family and really cared. Now I got a family, so I can't really just do some stupid f like that. Yeah, but yeah, you have yeah. a family, you can't hang out in boxes at work anymore. But if you didn't get a pregnant, yeah. you wouldn't care. <laughs> right? You know, you'd still be the same. Oh, I gotta take care of you. All right, that is just a strange one though. Hanging out in the box at work, stop hanging out in the box. Though. But I like him. So, like, that would be the co-worker I like. Like, hey, man, I'm going to be in the box. I'm rolling joints. But cool, man. What's the difference between being single and being a dad, Dad? Well, when you're a dad, you just want to hang out in the box. <laughs> oh. You realize you got kids. When I was single, I just hung out in the box because I want to smoke weed. Why were you or someone else fired? 206-421-ROCK. He was not smoking weed in the box miles. He was, he was rolling, rolling weed joint. for the drive home. Right. So they would better. notice him smoking it. I don't think someone, there's an animal in the box. Nah, man, it's just me. What was his name? Crab. I already don't know. All right. Yeah, it's just Chuck. <laughs> Why were you or someone else fired? 206 421 Rock. Hello, Cody. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So, I don't know if you guys know anything about the medical field, but it's very understaffed. So, you can have somebody who is really bad at their job and stuff and still work there. That's kind of like radio. Yeah. But now, when you call out two weeks prior saying you can't find your cat, and then we find your dead cat in your truck taking it to a medical facility because, quote, unquote, you don't have time to bury it, it's a little unnerving. Grounds to get fired, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, two weeks seems yeah. a little excessive. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> The scary part is, is that person is running your, I don't know, medical records, right? drawing blood, <laughs> putting an oh, IV no, in your arm. She's taking, yeah, she's taking care of your old old folks, you know, wiping their butts and making sure they don't die. Well, I'll trust her with wiping a butt. How's that? I don't know. Yeah, well, you we'll can't, give her that. You can't bury a cat in two goddamn weeks. Mm -hmm. I don't trust you to wipe my butt. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's a goddamn yeah, tiger. I mean, if you can put it in a shoebox, bury it. Take it to the vet. They'll handle it for you. Just, maybe they just were weird and wanted to stay with it. You know they were weird. Yeah. Everything about that. So they didn't lose their job for that. That was mm -hmm. the reason they used to get rid of that weirdo that they were working with. But I just I mean, my, my, Jobs are weird, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 like, I have to concentrate because I'm a slop. Not to, like, to keep my place clean. Sure, sure. But I was a janitor. Sure. So, like, she <laughs> yeah. might be good at wiping butts and taking care of the old people, 
Just doesn't have it all there, man. Whatever you That's do. That's quite a compliment. She's yeah. good at wiping butts. I can vouch for this. The cleanest asses well, in the whole way. Yeah, I'm just saying sometimes it's weird with job. You know what I mean? It's like, or... Anything you do. Th- Bangia Joe sent us a thing on Twitter the other day. So like, you know, here, here's the home I take care of with landscaping. And it's beautiful. Here's my home. And the weeds are six feet high. <laughs> right. Can't see the front of the house. Whatever you yeah. do. You know, you probably never wanted to go home and cook when you were a cook. No. I absolutely you, did You're not. like, when you're done with your job, you're just you're done with your job. That's when people say, like, do you guys listen to your show when you're off for a day? Do you listen to the reruns? No. Hell no. No. Hell no. 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 We need a day off. Yeah. Like, and what I'm going to do is critique ourselves. Right. right. Mm-hmm. I just like to think I've done a good job, and maybe I'm wrong. But when I listen, I'm like, you're terrible. Well, that's why fans are always shocked when you see, like, an NFL guy that's really into soccer. It's like, right, well, his whole life is American football. Right. Mm-hmm. So for him to relax and get away from it, he watches some, a different sport. Now, there are certain things where, like, I don't need to listen to myself on the radio, but we do it live. So you're kind of aware of what happened. What blows my mind are the actors or actresses that don't see their own movies. Mm-hmm. So, like, Adam Driver, right? Darth or Kylo Ren, he's done a ton of roles since then. House, House of Gucci. Gucci. So they... They asked him about, hey, man, you know, you're really you're really coming up. Your, your career's taking off. And he's a pretty serious guy. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go, well, what do you think of your movies when you go see him? He's like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't see my I, movies. I but I liked his line. He said, look, I'm an actor. I like to act. They pay me to act. I do the best job I can. And he goes, but I have no control over what the audience is going to like. Which is true. Whether mm-hmm. you do what we do, a band, yeah. TV show. And he goes... And I, it's not that I don't care, but he's like, all I'm going to do if I watch myself in a movie is think that everyone else is a better actor, how messy I am. He's right. like, it's not worth it. So no, he no, just no, doesn't that. do it. No, but no. my ego, I would still, even well, if I thought I sucked, I would want to see myself on not, a big-ass screen. This is not screen. what you do every day. That's, if, that's if a good it was, point. You, and, 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 look, man, you wrap up uh, shooting anything, TV show, movie, whatever it is. There's some time in, in post-production. You've already moved on. You've already gotten a different role, mm-hmm. and you're already starring in something else that someone's not going to see until two to three years. Right. They're not going to see that thing you just finished for another year. Right. It's going to take that much time. By this point in time, you're already in different character. You're already doing something else. You're sure. already in a different location. That's just, that was last year's news, man. It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, do I want to watch a COVID-19 movie? No. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying there aren't going to be a sequel. I'm just saying I don't want to watch that movie. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving forward. You know who says that? It pisses people off, but but I like his explanation. Robert Plant, right? So he does the stuff with Alison Krauss now. And they're like, dude, you need to do some Zeppelin tunes. And he goes, look, I am so proud that people love Zeppelin as much as they do. It's like, it was 50 goddamn years ago. And he's like, I'm just I'm just doing other things, man. I don't want to sing about Gollum. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm done. I did it. I was young. Now I'm old. Why were you or someone else fired? 206-421-ROCK. 